One year ago, I set some pretty ambitious writing goals for 2022, and today I'm going to react to that goal setting video and break down whether or not I was able to achieve those goals and what I learned from either meeting those goals or not meeting those goals. I'm actually really excited to film and react to this. I don't remember a lot about what exactly the goals were that I stated in that video, but I have an idea and I'm actually pretty optimistic about how I ended up doing, so very excited to break it down. I have my coffee, which will help me continue doing the talking, and without further ado, let's just get started. Boy, do I have a lot of things I want to accomplish this year. Buckle up everybody, because today I'm going to tell you what all of my goals are for 2022, and you are going to look at me like I'm a crazy person. Maybe or maybe not. 2022 is shaping up to be pretty busy and writing all of these goals down was a little bit daunting, but I'm very excited to get into them and to share all of them with you. I have divided them up into three main categories as I did with my video last year. First, I'm gonna talk about my writing goals. Second, I'm gonna talk about my channel slash social media goals. And third, I'm gonna talk about my habit forming goals because I'm a strong believer that you need to set habit forming goals alongside any actual concrete goals to help create the mechanisms to achieve those goals. Okay, just right off the bat, I don't remember any of my social media goals, but I will tell you that I did not meet them. This is really making me realize just how terrible my video quality was a year ago. I'm very, very glad I changed it a little bit and have this new filming setup here because this is embarrassing. So the first writing goal that I have is that I want to publish the audiobook version of my book, They Stay, which came out last October. I did it! I did that! I am I did that. That's very exciting. I published that in January and I'm pretty sure I'm about to say in this video that the audiobook is already done because I remember listening to it and proofing it over Christmas of last year. Over the past couple of months, I've been working with two brilliant narrators to bring my book, They Stay to Life, in audio form. And as of a couple of days ago, the audiobook is done. It's okay. A few so, this is a fake goal because I'd already accomplished this by the time I filmed this video. Really excited about it. I wanted to put this as a goal just because it is a really big achievement. It didn't happen last year, so it's going to fall into the goals of 2022, but I probably won't have to work super hard for this one because it's happening like next week. Yeah, I didn't have to work hard for it at all. It happened like next week. But you also never know what could happen. I already have had to deal with ACX customer support to work out all of these like little metadata quirks and stuff with the audiobook. So they could be super annoying about it and push it back later. But so far, everybody who I've talked to has been very helpful and all fingers crossed, it should be coming out sometime next week. Yeah, actually surprisingly enough, I had no issues with ACX this year. I'm surprised. I found them to be extremely helpful to be really proactive in working with me to get my audiobooks up. I had no problems using their software or recording or publishing or distributing through them, except actually for how long it took my audiobooks to get up on iTunes. That took almost a month and a half for they stay to be available on iTunes and it drove me crazy because I was trying to get people to download it on iTunes and I was trying to send emails out to my mailing list talking about the audiobook and pri trying to promote the audiobook and I only had a link for Audible and for Amazon and I didn't have one for iTunes and it drove me up the wall but I don't know if that was actually ACX's fault. That was just a distribution problem. My second writing goal for the year is to publish the sequel to They Stay, They Whisper, in April 2022. We did that too! We did that too. I published They Whisper on April 12th, 2022, and it was a headache and a half. It was so much work to get that book done. I was so stressed the whole month and a half because it, around January, I had a realization that I had to change a really big part of the book that pretty much made it so that I had to write the book from scratch and the book was scheduled to come out in April and I knew I had to send the book to my ARC team in March and it was so stressful and I would literally wake up every morning and just write a chapter from like 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. and then send it off to him and then I would do that every single day for like 40 chapters and it was so stressful. I was miserable, but it ended up actually working and I published the book on time and I was so happy about that. It did teach me a lot about my writing process and how I needed to give myself a little bit more time and a little bit more of a grace period. <laughs> which we're gonna get to this later. That really condensed publishing timeline did teach me that I'm capable of writing a book that I'm proud of 
in a very short period of time and that when I need to pull it together, I can really pull it together. But it also taught me that it is not a very pleasant experience and that if I want to nurture my creativity and be nicer to myself, I need to give myself a little bit more time because it was really, really stressful. But I did accomplish it. As of today, I am about a third of the way done with editing the third draft and I'm gonna start working chapter by chapter with my editor on it as I continue editing the end of the book and also editing the beginning of the book with my editor. Yeah, so going off of what I said before, the draft that I'm talking about in this video was not the final draft of the book. I filmed this I think in late December or very early January and I ended up having to completely rewrite it starting like late January and through the entire month of February in the first half of March. I finished They Whisper the day before I sent it off to my ARC team. It was right down to the wire and terrifying. So trying to speed up the editing process instead of waiting for me to have a complete draft three before starting my edit process. I did this when I wrote They Stay and it worked out really well because I already knew what I wanted to have happen and I know what I want to have happen in this book as well. Another huge joke, I had no idea what was going to happen. I thought I knew what was going to happen because I'd already written a couple of drafts when I filmed this video, but what I thought was going to happen in this book was not what ultimately ended up happening in They Whisper. It's a completely different book than I thought it was gonna be when I filmed this video. I'm so cool and nonchalant here, like, oh, it's fine. I can start chapter by chapter with my editor, it's fine. It was not fine. I had to work so hard every day to try to write these chapters and they were not well written and I had to send them to my editor anyway because I was right down to the wire and I needed to keep pace at one chapter every day. I was an absolute nut job. I was so stressed. I couldn't do anything other than just focus on this. Every single time I had to even go do the dishes, I almost had a panic attack because that was time that I wasn't spending on They Whisper. Not sustainable, not healthy. And all of this being said, I am really proud of myself for managing to pull myself together and publish They Whisper. Even though it was a really stressful experience, it was also extremely exhilarating. And it gave me so much confidence in myself as a writer that I was able to pull myself together and actually get a book I was proud of into people's hands in really like a month and a half. I'm still so proud of that book. And I was on like this writer's high rush the entire time I was doing it. I was just so immersed in the story. And even though it was stressful, I just gained so much confidence in my ability to pull something like that off and do something that was really hard and do it well because People liked the book and I still love the book. And yeah, it's, I feel very satisfied when looking back on publishing They Whisper. Third writing goal is that I want to record and publish They Whisper's audiobook probably later on in the spring or in the early summer. It, like, we did that, exactly that. The, the audiobook came out in May, I think? No. I was hoping that it would come out in May, but my brother and I went on a trip at the end of April to celebrate They Whisper coming out, and he's one of the narrators, so he couldn't get started recording his chapters until we got back from our trip. And he was also in school, and it was exam season, and everything was going down right at the end of the school year, and so we got everything recorded by the end of May, and then I'm pretty sure I had to take a little bit of a while to proof it and listen to it and make sure everything was up to snuff, so yeah, I think it came out. I, I don't really, I honestly cannot tell you, I don't remember, but it did, it came out in the early summer. My fourth goal, and this is the big one, is that I want to write and publish the third book in the They Stay series by September. This will officially- Okay, I was like a little bit, I was like, mm, maybe, yes, okay, we're looking good. And then, no, just burst out laughing. We did not get this done by September. This did not happen by September. I, was not even close to getting this book done by September. Right after I film this, I'm gonna film a whole separate video on They Return and breaking down my entire process for creating They Return and all of the different drafts and pitfalls and problems that I ran into because it was a real process. But it's done, but it's done now at the end of the year and it's gonna come out in January of 2023. It's coming out on January 31st. So I did write They return in 2022. I did manage to get that done. I wrote the third book in the They Stay series, but I did not do it by September. I really want to publish it in September because I want to take full advantage of spooky season and be able to like market 
during all of the different parts of the fall, but I also don't want to compromise on quality. So if I feel that I have to compromise on quality in order to get that book out by that time, I'm not going to do it. But if I can, I'm going to do it and I'm going to work really, really, really hard to try to pull that off. I did work really hard to try to pull that off, but I still didn't pull it off. Sometimes you work really hard for things and you still don't pull them off and it's okay. At the time of September of this year, They Return really didn't exist. They Return is also the longest of any book that I have ever written. It's 140,000 words. They Whisper was I think 103 and They Stay was 112, so they're a little bit on the shorter end. So when I was writing They Return, it just kept getting longer and longer and longer and my writing process for that book was a little bit different than the first two in the series. So I did a lot of learning and a lot of growing while I wrote this book. I honestly do think it might be my favorite out of all the ones I've written so far. Um, but yeah, it did not happen at September of this year and I did not want to compromise on quality and I was not in a place where I could realistically publish it in September. I did do, try to do my best with marketing during spooky season. I did free promotions. I tried to be active on social media, but we'll get to the social media stuff a little later. Because I don't really want to publish around November, December because my books are more Halloween-y and not Christmas and Thanksgiving-y, so I'd have to wait until January. And I don't want to wait that long before publishing book three in the series. We are waiting that long. It is coming out in January. I didn't publish it in November and December for exactly this reason. I didn't want it to be a Thanksgiving or Christmas book, but you know, I said that this would be not a good thing to happen in my goals video and that's what's happening and it's really not the end of the world. This is gonna be a fun goal to react to when I record my reaction video next year because if I can pull it off, I will be shouting from the friggin' rooftops and if I can't, then I will have a good laugh about it at the end of the year. Cue laugh track. Ha 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 ha. My fifth goal is that I want to write two short stories in the They Stay universe to go along with books two and three in the series. This did not happen. I regret this not happening. I wish this could have happened, but I really don't enjoy writing short stories. I really don't, and I don't know why. I've never liked writing short stories. I love sinking my teeth into much longer projects, and I think I'm just so used to the longer stories and how big the stakes can get and how deep the conflict can get, that it's harder for me to keep my interest in a conflict that is just so much smaller. I just don't enjoy writing it as much. I would still like to do this, but my new focus is instead of writing random short stories in the They Stay universe, I want to write, I think, a novella or some sort of reader magnet for my mailing list that would be extremely compelling. Sixth goal is to draft the standalone young adult supernatural thriller that I am planning to draft this year. I have an idea for a standalone YA thriller that I'm happen. really, really excited about, and I would like to draft it and get it ready to query, not actually query it, but get it ready to query by the end of this year. I did not do this. I actually decided not to write this book. I consulted a couple of editors from traditional publishing houses or people who are now freelance editors who have been editors at traditional publishing houses for a long time and talked to them about these ideas and tried to bounce some career options and ways that I could move forward off of them. And I received some feedback on that particular idea that made me want to table it. I don't think that it's necessarily a terrible idea, but I don't think that that's where my time is best spent right now. I also decided that I don't think I'm gonna query. I don't really have that much interest right now in going and pursuing traditional publishing. I'm really enjoying self-publishing. I am loving being able to be in complete control of my series and of my marketing, and I'm going to put a bit more of an emphasis on doing in-person, real, like kind of old school marketing in 2023 going and doing events at bookstores and doing book signings and doing book tours and things like that. And I'm really excited about that. So I really don't feel that much of a need to go and query traditional publishing houses right now, especially if it's an idea that I'm not completely in love with. I'm completely in love with my series and now I'm gonna be starting book four in the They Stay series and I just want my full undivided attention to be on that. So yeah, I'm. I'm tabling this, but it, I didn't even try to meet this goal. I just put out a couple of feelers to get some feedback on the idea. And when the feedback wasn't what I wanted, and when I decided that that's not really what I wanted to do, I just purposefully tabled it. 
it wasn't that even that I didn't meet the goal, it's just that I chose not to. And my last writing goal is that I want to continue my writing education this year. I want to take writing courses, I want to review courses on this channel, I want to go to conferences, I want to meet other writers, I want to really go into this year intentionally focusing on growing my craft and growing as a writer. I did do this. I read so many craft books this year. I didn't review a ton of them on my channel yet. I reviewed a couple of them, but I actually have a couple of videos planned reviewing different craft books that I really, really love. Some of them are back there. If you want a sneak peek at some of the future videos that I do, they're like on that part of my bookshelf. I also attended the 20 books to 50K conference this year, which was amazing. And I learned so much from going to that conference. I also caught COVID by going to that conference, but I learned so much from going to that conference. <laughs> Continuing your writing education is so important. That's why I continue to work with author coaches and mentors and take classes and read books and consciously think about my writing. It's always a balance for me because if I think about it too much and then I will start feeling bad about myself as a writer, which makes my productivity go down and makes me not write as much. And if I try to raise myself up to a really high standard and try to conquer all of these different problems at once, then it will just make me really, really not feel very good about where I am right now. So. It's always a bit of a balance with just trying to make every book that I write better than the one before and not try to hold myself to such a standard that I don't write at all. So this is this is the, you know, curse of having such a perfectionistic brain. I'm about to enter that phase of my publishing and writing process where I just agonize over whether or not this sentence should have a but in it or whether this sentence is better off as two sentences or whether the comma really works where it is and really down to the nitty gritty everything, which is torture, but it's also, I really secretly enjoy it. But I'm really happy with everything that I learned this year. I really do feel like I grew a lot as a writer from the beginning of this year to the end of this year. And if you are watching this video and if you're subscribed to my channel, kudos for continuing your own writing education with me. I really just want this to be a space where we can all learn and grow from each other, which is why I don't come up here and try to tell you that I am God's gift to writing and know everything that there is to know about writing because I don't and I'm still learning. And my goal for this channel is just to share with you the things that are personally helping me as I mature and learn and grow as a writer. All right, so those are my writing goals. Now I want to move on to my channel and social media goals for the year. So yeah, I'm not excited about this one. This one's gonna be really embarrassing. The YouTube channel goal number one is that I want to up my posting frequency to two times a week. I did not do this. I was good about this for maybe the month of January and then I went back to once a week. And then in November and December, I might've published two videos total. It was so, bad. I completely fell off the wagon the last two months of the year with, with posting for the channel and it was because everything with They Return got so crazy and then I went to the conference in Vegas and then I got COVID and then I just everything just happened all at once and then it was the holidays and then I was on a deadline and then everything just you know blew up in a giant ex cartoonish explosion. I always am also talking about how I'm a writer first and a YouTuber second, and I do stand by that. I always prioritize finishing my books before I prioritize getting my videos up. And when I'm on a deadline, it's a lot harder for me to be consistently posting. I do wish that I could up my frequency to two times a week, but I don't think realistically that's gonna happen. I've been trying to do that now for two years and it hasn't happened. So I think I'm just gonna sit comfortably at one video a week and just try to make it the best video that I possibly can. And maybe I'll up my frequency when I don't have a deadline, if I'm not currently working on a book or at least if I'm not working on a book that has to be published in less than two months then maybe I'll publish more. But I, I, I think I just have to move with my deadlines and goals. I also want to continue doing live streams twice a month. So this will double the amount of content that I am putting out there. And yeah, I want to do that. I did do more live streams this year and I actually really enjoy doing live streams. That's something I learned about myself this year is that I really enjoy talking to you over live streams. So I think I'm good. that's something I'm going to carry forward into 2023. Obviously, I haven't been doing them the past two months because I've just been so slammed with a return. And the last thing that I wanted to do 
while I had COVID was <laughs> try to answer questions about writing just because my brain was mashed potatoes. But I do want to start doing that in 2023. I want to have a live stream at least once a month, if not twice a month. It would be nice if I could do one weekly. I'm going to have to see how that fits into my schedule. My goal setting for 2023 is not going to be, it's going to be ambitious, but it's going to be realistic because I, one thing I do really like about having this channel is that I have to, I'm forced to do a lot of reflection and look at my goals for 2022 and reflect on whether or not I actually met them and what I can do differently. And watching this video back is making me want to be a lot more realistic with setting my 2023 goals. My second channel goal is that I want to grow this channel to 10,000 subscribers. This also didn't happen, but I am almost at 5,000 subscribers, which is really exciting. And I think that 10,000 subscribers will probably be my 2023 goal. I really don't like putting emphasis on the number of subscribers on the channel. For me, it's all about building community and making videos that I'm proud of and engaging with you in the comment section and really nurturing the channel. I know that the channel growth is going to come if I put love and attention into the channel. And because I haven't been posting very consistently the past two months, that really hasn't happened. So one of the first things I'm gonna be doing in the new year once they return is done is to step back and really take care of the YouTube channel. But yeah, you know, if you're watching this video and you would like to subscribe and be one of these new members of our community, please do. I would be so happy to have you. I'd also love to grow my TikTok to 10,000 followers. I have 1,600 followers right now. I actually decided to stop doing TikTok altogether a couple months ago. I grew my TikTok to about 3,000 followers and I just wasn't finding a lot of return for those, for all the time that I'd spend filming videos. TikTok was really draining to me. I would always like put makeup on and I'd go and try to make it so that I had a nice background and I would try really hard to be funny and it would take a lot of energy and it felt very draining. I never felt like I was getting anything back from it. It was never invigorating. It just felt like I was a battery and my battery life was draining. And I did it for a while because I thought that it would be good to gather that like followers and gather attention on the books. And I was seeing all these other authors going viral on TikTok and I wanted that kind of success for my books, but it didn't really happen that way and every time that I had a video go viral it didn't translate into book sales and I just felt that my time was better spent elsewhere and I was also a lot happier when I wasn't worrying about TikTok so I kind of put a pause on that. I did find that when I posted TikToks to Instagram and like posted them as reels that my Instagram started doing really well so I, I do kind of want to go back to doing that, but I just really don't enjoy the short form videos. I like doing videos like these that are longer where I can sit down and really think about what I'm saying and they have a longer shelf life. And I just, I'm not a really big, I'm not very good at following trends and I don't have the sense of humor that I think works really well on TikTok. So I just found that it was a better decision for me and for my books if I stop doing TikTok. Social media just generally is hard for me. Like I have a social battery that is very easy to deplete. And so it takes a lot of energy to be on all of these social media platforms all the time. But I'm doing my best because I really like connecting with you all and I like creating content. And you know, I just, you know, I enjoy it. My next, my next you, I, do, I did not enjoy it. I did not enjoy making TikToks. I did not enjoy making reels. I do not enjoy social media generally, except for YouTube. YouTube is the one exception I actually do enjoy YouTube, which is why I think I'm going to, in 2023, step into YouTube and just make YouTube my thing and not try to be on all of these different social media platforms and just like try to do YouTube really well. And this will be like my place on social media land that I really kind of stake out a little place because I like it. I like YouTube. Some things never change though. I still have the social battery that depletes in like 0.2 seconds whenever I'm trying to like dance on TikTok. The next YouTube channel goal is that I want to create more story focused content. A lot of the content that I've done that has like, you know, where I've made a short story to illustrate some sort of outlining mechanism. I really love making these videos. I don't think I prioritize this enough. So this is gonna be another goal I think that I continue carrying forward with me. I also wanna do more example-based craft videos. So instead of just talking about a point, I wanna make sure that every time that I make a video, 
talking about how to do something, I also make a video, maybe a separate video, showing through an example, either one that already exists or one that I create, how to do the thing that I have talked about. I feel like I've been better about this. I'm not perfect, but I have been making more of these videos. I have found that they actually don't do as well as I hope. Like the one that I made about the grace year, it took me forever breaking down that chapter and like writing a full analytical essay about it, but it didn't really take off the same, the, the way that I was hoping it would. So I'm gonna still do them. They just take a lot of effort. And I also would like to have a little bit of a payoff if I put in that much time, because these videos do take a lot of time. That's the one thing that that's why they always kind of have to fall to the side when I'm on a deadline because every single hour counts when I'm trying to get these books done because you know I have an animals to take care of and I have to generally take care of myself so all of the hours that I am not doing that I need to be writing and so YouTubing typically doesn't squeeze in the same way but you know me can't form any writing goals without also setting habit goals habit goals are really important I have a lot of habit goals for 2023 and I think I've been moving in this direction anyway, and a lot of it is continuing off of the foundation that I've already built. But there's one big habit change that I am going to start doing in the new year that I think is gonna make a world of difference when it comes to my productivity. But more on that in my actual goal setting video. My first habit goal of 2022 is actually one that was also a habit goal for 2021, and that is to continue waking up early. We did that. I would still do that. I wake up early. I wake up at 5 every day. I typically get out of bed at 5.30 because I like going on my phone and checking my emails right after I get up, which is not very smart, but that's what I do. And that really helps me get my work done in the morning. I still write every morning. I'll write from maybe 6 30 7 all the way until 2 and then i'll mark it in the afternoon what i really want to get into is always filming more than one youtube video at a time so while i have everything set up i'm always filming at least two or more so that i can make sure that i have a backlog of content so i don't need to miss weeks in case something comes up or i am on a deadline i actually did get better at this i usually film in batches now so i'll film even maybe three or four videos at a time and I'll film like every three weeks, which is good. And it does mean that I have videos, but like I filmed four videos at the end of October that I was gonna post one a week in November, but then COVID and conference and deadline and nonsense. And then I got home for the holidays and it was just a whirlwind of getting the return done. And then it also takes a long time to edit videos. And so I didn't really, I really wish that I'd been better about it, but I wasn't better about it. And this is the situation I'm in now and it's fine and everything is gonna be absolutely fine. And this is not the end of the world, but this is another, definitely a goal that I want to keep doing because when I do film lots of videos, it is easier for me to sit down and edit a video than it is for me to sit down and film the video. So I do like having a couple of videos filmed at a time. And once they return is published, I will be able to really film a lot more. I also have some pretty exciting YouTube plans that I haven't talked about yet, but that I might talk about when I film my goals video. And I'm very, very excited to share this. It is upping my workload when it comes to YouTube, but in a very exciting way. So exciting announcements to come. I think that something that I want to do to try to combat burnout and have a more healthy work-life balance that actually allows me time to do things like work out and take care of myself is setting concrete work hours where like after a certain time, no matter how much work I got done during that time, my work day is over. This is very good advice. I was very smart a year ago. I actually did the opposite of this, not in terms of taking care of myself, but instead of setting concrete work hours, I set tasks that I have to complete every day. And so with my one chapter a day task, if my chapter only takes me four hours, then I'll take the rest of that day and not think about writing and maybe do like actually do a workout and not be quite as stressed and 
go walk my dog or then do some marketing. But if that task the next day takes me 12 hours, I'll work the full 12 hours and just focus on getting that task done. This isn't exactly a writing goal, but it's kind of a writing goal. I want to find a form of exercise that I genuinely enjoy and I wanna do that three times a week. I did not find a form of exercise I enjoy. At this point in my life, I'm starting to believe that it does not exist. I did go through a very short stint where I did like Pilates and I still actually do like Pilates as long as I don't have to exercise that much. I like the way that Pilates makes me feel but I just don't like the feeling of everything hurting and feeling like I'm dying. So that did not really end up working. I'm not setting any reading goals for this year because I always find that I don't actually meet those reading goals. I have found that I am a bit of a burst reader, like I'll read a lot and then I won't read for a couple of months and then I'll read a lot and then I won't read for a couple of months. This is still absolutely true. So I'm just gonna kind of go where that takes me and try to read a lot, but also not force myself to read all the time and like continuously try to dip my toes into books to see if I'm really gonna get hooked in and take off with it. But I'm not, you know, gonna be really hard on myself about it. I read a lot of writing craft books and I read a bunch of young adult thrillers. Other than that, I didn't read that much. And by a bunch of young adult thrillers, I really don't mean that many. I probably read maybe about 10 books this year that weren't writing books. So nothing crazy, but I did read a little bit. I just, I will go through bursts where I'll just read a lot and then I won't be able to do anything but think about that book and then I won't read it all for a little while. So it, th that's just what I've learned about myself as a reader and as a person. I love to read, but it's, I just have to be in the right headspace to want to read because honestly, sometimes after I've spent all day writing, I just, the last thing I want to do is look at any words on a page. <laughs> I just want to watch TV. So I guess that's it. Those were my goals for 2022. And that's how I did. I think maybe, hold on, let me just go do the math and figure out exactly how many I met. Of the 13 goals that I set for 2022, I confidently met about eight and then I partially met some other ones. So all in all, I think I did pretty good. I am very happy with the year that I had. I think I matured a lot as a writer. I was very productive and I got a lot done. I made a lot of headway on my series. I made a lot of headway on YouTube. I really learned what I like to film on YouTube and what realistic posting schedules look like for me. I upgraded my filming studio. Obviously it looks better than it did when I posted this original video. I feel like I'm starting to hit my stride when it comes to my publishing schedule and with marketing. Obviously there are still challenges and I'm human and I get tired when doing social media and nothing is absolutely perfect, but I'm just ending this year with a very overwhelmingly positive feeling about 2022 and I'm just really excited about the new challenges that 2023 is going to bring. I felt like I matured so much as a writer this year. I am so proud that I was able to write two books in my series this year. That's crazy. I've never written two books in a year ever that I'm this proud of. And yeah, on the up and up. Thank you so much to everybody who subscribed to my channel this year. I'm so grateful for you taking the time to watch my videos and to engage with me and to follow my writing journey. You have no idea how much it means to me that you're here. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And if you're not subscribed, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel and help me meet my goals for 2023. I would be so grateful if you stuck around and joined our community. What are your goals for 2023? Let me know down in the comments if you have writing goals, social media goals, publishing goals, habit forming goals. I am going to be filming my goals video right after this where I break down all of my goals for 2023. And so if you wanna watch that, make sure that you subscribe to my channel so that you get a little notification or have it pop up in your subscriber feed when that video comes out. And happy new year, everybody. I hope you all have a fantastic new year. And as always, happy writing.